Matt, the clock starts now. When a newcomer says, TypeScript sounds like a lot of extra steps, why should I bother? What do you say? If you want your integrated development environment to be more powerful, you should use TypeScript. If you don't want it to be as powerful, you should use JavaScript. Perfectly fine if you don't want a powerful IDE, but now with AI agents, now with everyone rushing to make their IDE as powerful as possible, TypeScript is just like a no-brainer. Makes sense. So you've taught TypeScript to thousands of developers, including many live workshops. What's a typical aha moment that you see it click for learning people learning TypeScript? Honestly, it's the error flow. It's literally the feedback you get from TypeScript that goes, okay, there was a runtime error, and actually we trace the runtime error, we see, okay, it's erroring in the browser, and we go all the way through and Ah, there's literally a red squiggly line under the line of code that caused the error in the browser. Why didn't I pick that up? And dozens, I mean, thousands of companies now are thinking exactly the same way that TypeScript is just preventing runtime errors. That's what it's for, and that's what it's doing all over the world. What's the most common misconception about TypeScript? I think the most common misconception is that it's type safe, you know? Like, I'm not sure TypeScript is as type safe as people think it is. And really, it's not supposed to be putting just types in the language just for the fun of it. It's really supposed to just give you a better IDE experience. Without TypeScript, you wouldn't have things like autocomplete, rename symbol, go to definition inside your IDE. Your IDE would be much less powerful. So think of TypeScript as enabling your IDE to get more powerful instead of making the language more type safe. Right on. Uh, what is one power up TypeScript features that more people should learn sooner in their learning journey? I think people should be aware of generics earlier in their journey. Now, if okay. you're building like an application or you're migrating from JavaScript, then generics is actually going to give you a really like healthy experience working on the utility functions. Because if your utility functions, the things that reused across your app, aren't up to shape, then the rest of your application is not going to be as type safe and you're going to have to do more work. So if you learn generics a little bit earlier in your development process, you'll have a much better time building applications. That's a great tip. I'm going to brush up my generics knowledge. <laughs> do you personally use TypeScript on personal projects? I use TypeScript every single possible place I can. Do you write types first when you build something, as in sort of like a TDD or schema-driven development approach? Great question. So I always pretty much write my types first, and mm -hmm. often I end up creating what are called typed holes in my system, where you basically just create a function, you give it a um, parameter types and the return types, and then you implement it later. This means you can think at a high level first, think about what the shapes of the data are going to be, and then, especially with an AI that's just able to sort of like spool through and add the implementation, it makes things a lot easier. So types first, runtime second, is often how I approach it. That's great. I love what you said about AI. It makes total sense mm. to embrace that. Where is your personal limit on where it needs to be type safe? Type safe CSS? <laughs> yeah, so like type safe Tailwind CSS, for instance, you know, like type safe on every single class name. You basically don't need it, I think. Like, as long as you have the VS Code extension where you have the nice autocomplete, which is kind of what types enable the powerful IDE features, then I don't really think in terms of, oh, this needs to be mega, mega, mega type save. It needs to be correct. It needs to give me the right hints at the right times, give me the right warnings at the right times. But I don't want every single string in my application to be type safe. You know, that seems a little bit overkill. For instance, people love making or experiment with type safe hex codes in their application, which is just <laughs> yep, insane. Type safe roots, type safe all sorts. Unless it's going to cause a real bug, if it's wrong, I like to just keep it relatively loose. That's a great answer. All right, we got 45 seconds left. Have you ever regretted using TypeScript? Never, ever, ever once have I regretted using TypeScript. Love that. And final question, if you could magically add one feature to TypeScript tomorrow, what would it be? The TypeScript is uh, TypeScript is rewriting in a uh, in Go, so it's actually like getting yeah. ten times faster. So I would like that uh, tomorrow, please. That would be really nice. Instead of I think towards the end of the year. Other than that, there are some nerdy things that I would add, like um, 
I would love to see TypeScript get better at narrowing generic functions and making sure that the generic types match up to what's actually happening at runtime. And generally narrowing stuff in TypeScript as well could always be improved. And we're out of time. Thank you so much, Matt. That was awesome. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> I'm going to get better at that. <laughs>